drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hello students my name is neeti seeth and thanks for watching edupedia word videos my topic for the presentation is second section of the chapter cell the basic unit of life is students in this section of the video we will discuss about the prokaryotic cells is students every living organisms can be categorized as either a prokaryote or eukaryote there are many different examples of both type of organisms students have you or anyone you know ever had strep throat before if so then you are eukaryote and have become acquainted with a prokaryote now you are probably asking several questions at this point what in the world is a eukaryote and what is prokaryote how am i a prokaryote and which prokaryote did i get to know well let's get you the answer to your question that is first we will discuss about prokaryotes okay so prokaryotes they are one celled organism that do not have a nucleus or any other membrane bound organelles inside them the name prokaryote itself actually lets you know that there is not a nucleus since pro means before and karyote means or karyote refers to nucleus students okay pro means before and karyo means nucleus students okay so prokaryotes they are one celled organelles organisms that do not have a nucleus or any other membrane bound organelles inside them okay In fact the name prokaryote itself actually lets you know that there is not a nucleus okay a prokaryote cell they are represented by bacteria blue green algae mycoplasm or pplo okay pplo is pleuro pneumonia like organisms they are generally smaller and they multiply more rapidly than eukaryote cells i'm talking about the prokaryote cells students okay they may vary greatly in shape and size the four basic shapes of bacteria are bacillus coccus vibrio and spirillum okay bacillus means rod like see rod like okay and coccus means spherical vibrio means comma like okay and spirillum like a spiral like okay so these are the four basic shapes of bacteria the organism of prokaryote cell is fundamentally similar even though prokaryotes they exhibit a wide variety of shapes and function all prokaryotes they have cell wall surrounding the cell membrane please note that okay now let's see the cell organelles in prokaryote cells students okay as i told you that it has cell envelope okay and it has mesosome nucleoid flagella pili or fimbri ribosomes and inclusion bodies these are the seven cell organelles which are found in prokaryotic cells students the fluid matrix filling the cell is called as cytoplasm so this is your cytoplasm this blue color gel like structure is cytoplasm there is no well defined nucleus can you find the nucleus here just like in eukaryote cells no it is in the form of nucleoid that is it contains genetic material so the genetic material is basically naked in case of prokaryote cell which is not enveloped by nuclear membrane unlike in eukaryotes okay in addition to the genomic dna many bacteria have a smaller circular dna outside genomic dna okay so these smaller dna are called as plasmids see this is plasmid this is extra chromosomal dna okay 
So the plasmid DNA it confers certain unique phenotypic characters to such bacteria. One such character is resistance to antibiotics. Okay. In higher classes, you will learn that this plasmid DNA, this plasmid DNA, which is extra chromosomal in nature, is used to monitor bacterial transformation with foreign DNA. Okay. So the nuclear membrane is found in eukaryotes but not in prokaryotes. No organelles like the ones in eukaryotes are found in prokaryotic cells except for ribosomes. See these red dots are ribosomes. Okay. Prokaryotes have something unique in the form of inclusion and that is called as inclusion body students. Okay. A specialized differentiated form of cell membrane called mesosome okay, is found which is a unique characteristic of prokaryote cells. Okay, They are essentially infoldings of cell membrane. See this is cell membrane. Okay, This yellow one is your cell membrane. So sometime it is seen that it infolds and that is called as mesosomes. Okay. So these are the seven things which we will study in prokaryotes that is cell envelope, mesosome or chromatophores, nucleoid, flagella, pili and fimbriae, ribosomes and inclusion body students. Okay. So first is cell envelope. So what is cell envelope students? It is chemically complex protective covering. Okay, most prokaryotic cells, particularly the bacterial cells, they have a chemically complex cell envelope. So, this is your cell envelope. Okay, this is your cell envelope. The cell envelope, it consists of tightly bound three layered structure. First is glycochylix, which is followed by cell wall and then plasma membrane. So, these three Tightly bound layers they form cell envelope students. Although each layer of the envelope performs distinct function, they act together as a single protective unit. Bacteria can be classified into two groups on the basis of the difference in cell envelope and the manner in which they respond to staining procedure developed by Gram. For example, gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria. Okay, so this is the typical representation of a bacteria. See, this is the glycochylix layer. This yellow one is cell wall and this green one is plasma membrane. So, these three tightly bound layers, they together form cell envelope and this matrix is called as cytoplasm. This is ribosome. This is plasmid which is extra chromosomal in nature. This is nucleoid which is not enveloped by nuclear membrane. Okay, and this is your pili and this is your flagellum or bacterial flagella. Okay. As I told you that glycochylix it differs in uh, composition and thickness among different bacteria. Okay, so it is a outermost layer. As you can see, this red one is the outermost layer, which is representing glycochylix. Okay, so it differs in composition and thickness among different bacteria. It could be loose sheet, like which is called as slim layer. Okay, loose sheet is called as slim layer, but in uh, some while in others it may be thick and tough which we call it as capsule so it could be slim layer or it could be capsule okay the cell wall is the second layer okay cell wall is the middle layer you can say cell wall it determines the shape of the cell it is seen in all prokaryotes and it determines the shape of the cell and it provides a strong structural support to prevent the bacteria from bursting and collapsing okay so this is the significance of cell wall which is represented by this yellow color okay which is tightly bounded to the glycochylix that is the outermost layer okay so this cell wall it gives uh, or it determines the shape to the cell and it provides a structural support to prevent the bacteria from bursting and collapsing 
Then comes plasma membrane. This is green one. Okay. So plasma membrane is the innermost layer. And it is, you can say it is semi-permeable in nature. That means it selectively allows component to come in or go out. Okay. So that's why it is semi-permeable in nature and it interacts with the outside world. This membrane is similar structurally to that of the eukaryotes. Okay, so it is structurally similar to that of eukaryotes. This is the main point that you have to remember. Okay, so these were the three layers, three tightly bound layers, glycocalyx, cell wall and plasma membrane that forms a cell envelope in prokaryotes. Okay. As I have taught you that bacteria can be classified into two groups on the basis of difference in the cell envelope and the manner in which they respond to the staining procedure. So based on the type of the cell envelope and response to the gram staining, bacteria are of two types, gram positive and gram negative. Gram positive staining means they take up and they retain gram stain. He was Christian Gram. He developed Gram straining method. Okay. So Gram positive bacteria, they take up and they retain Gram stain. Whereas Gram negative, they do not retain the Gram strain. Okay. See, this is Escherichia coli. That is E. coli, which is Gram negative in nature. That means they do not retain the Gram strain. Whereas Staphylococcus aureus is Gram positive in nature. That takes up and retain the gram stain okay so this is gram positive and gram negative bacteria now comes mesosome what is that see this is infolding which is called as mesosome so when Plasma membrane, see this is plasma membrane, okay? So when plasma membrane gets enfolded, then it forms mesosome, okay? So mesosome is a special membranous structure which is called as mesosome, which is formed by extension of plasma membrane into the cell. And these extensions, they are in the form of vesicles, tubules or lamella, okay? So there are the three types of mesosome, that is vesicle, tubule and lamellae okay they help in cell wall formation please note that that they help in cell wall formation dna replication and distribution to daughter cells mesosome and chromatophores so what are the functions of mesosomes students first is cell wall formation second it helps in chromosome replication and third for distribution of chromosomes to daughter cells and Fourth, that they help in respiration and secretion process to increase the surface area of plasma membrane and enzymatic content is the main crucial function of mesosome. In some prokaryotes like cyanobacteria, there are other membranous extensions into the cytoplasm which we call it as chromatophores which contain pigments. Okay. Let's see what it is, chromatophores. As I told you that in some prokaryotes, see this is prokaryote, like cyanobacteria, there are other membranous extensions. See these are the extensions, membranous extensions which are found in cyanobacteria. Into the cytoplasm, it is called as chromatophores students, which contain pigments. Okay, so they contain pigments. That's why their name is chromatophores. Chromato means color okay and force means pigments so colored pigments it contains and it is a membranous structure okay mesosome and chromatophores they both are membranous structures so don't get confused okay now comes nucleoid students what is that Nucleoid, it is formed of non-membranous, that is naked circular genomic DNA. Okay, see this is nucleoid. That means it is naked circular genomic DNA and protein. Okay, many bacteria, they have a smaller circular DNA. 
that is plasmid outside genomic DNA. It gives some unique phenotypic characters that is resistance to some antibiotics to bacteria. Okay, so what is plasmid? It is extra chromosomal DNA outside the genomic DNA and it gives some unique phenotypic characters such as resistance to antibiotics to bacteria. Okay, so this is your nuclei which is non-membranous naked DNA it contains. Okay. Now what is flagella students? This is flagella. Okay, and this longer one is your flagella. Bacterial cells. It can be motile or non-motile. If motile, they have thin filamentous extension from their cell wall called flagella. So this is flagella. Okay, if motile, they have thin filamentous extension from their cell wall, which is called as flagella. So flagella is nothing. It is an extension of cell wall. See, this is their cell wall. Okay, bacteria show a range in the number and the arrangement of flagella. Bacterial flagellum is composed of three parts. First is filament, second is hoop, and third is basal body. The filament is the longest portion and it extends from cell surface to outside. Okay? So, filament is the longest portion and it extends from cell surface to the outside. Okay? Now comes pili and fimbri. Students, Beside flagella, pili and fimbri are also surface structures of bacteria but do not play a role in motility. See, these are your pili, okay? These are your pili. So, these are the surface structures that have no role in motility. They are elongated tubular structure which is made up of a special protein which is called as pilin. On this name, pili is named. Okay, then what is fimbri students? Fimbri, they are a small bristle like fibers sprouting out of the cell. Okay, in some bacteria, they help to attach the bacteria to rock and streams and to the host tissue. So, they are a small bristle like fibers sprouting out of the cell. And in some bacteria, they are known to help attach the bacteria to the rock. Okay. But these two, pili and fimbri, they do not play a role in cell motility unlike filament, that is flagellum. Flagellum, it helps in the motility, okay? Because bacterial cells, they may be motile or they could be non-motile. So, if they are motile, they have thin filamentous extension from their cell wall, which we call it as flagella, which I have already taught you, okay? And bacteria flagellum is composed of three parts, filament, hook and basal body, okay? And this filament is the longest portion and it extends from the cell surface to the outside, okay? And then pili and fimbri beside a flagella, they are also the surface structures of the bacteria that do not play a role in motility. They are elongated tubular structures which is made up of a special protein which we call it as pillin, okay? And fimbri, they are a small bristle-like fibers that sprout out of the, okay? Now comes ribosomes students. In prokaryotes, ribosomes they are associated with plasma membrane of the cell. They are about 15 nanometer by 20 nanometer in size and they are made up of two subunits. First is 30S and for 50S. S represents Swedberg unit. Okay, so when they combine, they form 70S unit and not ATS unit. Don't add 50 and 30. Okay, 50 and 30 makes 80, but it is 70S ribosome, okay, which present together and they form 70S prokaryotic ribosome. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. You can call it as protein factories also, okay. Several ribosomes may attach to single mRNA and they form a chain called polyribosome or polysome, okay and the ribosome of polysome translate the mRNA into protein, okay? S represents sedimentation coefficient or it is a measure of density and size. S means Swedberg unit, okay? 
so what's the function of ribosome students as I told you that it is called as protein factory they are the site of translation translation means protein synthesis okay see this is polyribosome okay this is polyribosome on which two units of ribosome that is 50s and 30s are attached see this is 50s unit and this is 30s unit they come together and combine this is mrna this green one is your mrna on which these two units of ribosome come and attach to and they help in the translation that is protein synthesis okay so this purple chain is a protein which is coming out from the ribosome so this is your polypeptide chain polypeptide means protein okay so several ribosomes they may attach to a single mrna to form a chain which we call it as polyribosome polyribosome is also called as polysome ribosome of a polysome translate the mrna into proteins okay and after the translation that is after protein formation it gets out i mean these two units they get out from the mrna okay so i hope uh, this is clear to all of you now now comes inclusion bodies what is that students inclusion bodies reserve material in prokaryotic cells they are stored in the cytoplasm in the form of inclusion bodies okay they are non-membranous stored reserve material which is seen freely in the cytoplasm of a prokaryote cell okay you can say that it is a reserve material in the prokaryotic cells they are stored in the cytoplasm in the form of inclusion body okay and they are non-membranous structure which are found freely in the cytoplasm of a prokaryote cell they are not membrane by membrane system that's why they lie freely in the cytoplasm see this is cytoplasm this entire portion is cytoplasm okay this pink one is plasma membrane this is cell wall this is glycocylix which forms capsule okay because glycocylix are of two types slim layer or capsule so here in this case it is capsule and these are small dots are ribosome and this is nucleoid which is naked okay and this is flagellum bacterial flagellum and these are the inclusion bodies which are non-membranous in structure and they have a stored reserve material and they are in the form of nucleation bodies okay and they lie freely in the cytoplasm for example phosphate granules okay they contain phosphate granules cyanophysian granules or glycogen granules okay or it could also contain gas vacuoles too okay gas vacuoles they are found in uh, blue green and purple and green photosynthetic bacteria okay so this was about uh, the seven organelles which are found in prokaryotic cells. In my next section of the presentation, I'll be teaching you about the eukaryotic cells and their organelles. So till then, stay tuned and keep watching Etopedia Word videos. Thank you.